15 million years ago in what would become modern day Peru, a llama-like hoofed mammal was grazing on the low-lying forest shrub. And like modern prey animals, they remained astute for the slightest sound of danger. The largest predator in South America at this time was a distant relative of crocodiles. However, during the strange times in which they lived, despite being many miles away from the nearest body of water that could fully submerge a giant crocodile, they were still at threat. In 1937, a partial skull of a now extinct crocodile relative were found in Argentina. Later, when its limbs were discovered, they were found to be nearly twice the length of modern crocodilians. Specifically, the length of its femur to other bones were much more comparable to creatures that primarily live and hunt on land than crocodiles. So it had evolved to be able to pursue animals over land, and not ambush them from the water. These crocodiles were named the Sebekids, after Sobek, the Egyptian crocodile god. Fifty to sixty million years ago, as the planet was just starting to heal from the asteroid impact that caused the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, the ecosystems of the world were incredibly strange. They were very different from before, seeing as there were no giant dinosaurs around, but equally, they had very little in common with the ecosystems of today. As although a few of the major modern mammal groups were just starting to gain a foothold, they were very primitive and barely recognisable. However, the one constant before and after the mass extinction event, as always, were crocodiles. Several lineages of crocodiles not only survived, but also recovered very quickly after, being some of the first animals to readapt large sizes. The crocodilians, alligators and crocodiles, the dryosaurids, a group of largely marine crocodiles that went extinct around 40 million years ago, and finally, the sebicids. The Sebekids' ancestors split from modern crocodilians in the Jurassic period, so they are not true crocodiles, and instead would be more accurately named crocodiloforms. The earliest known Sebekid in the fossil record was called Ogasuchus, that was actually known from the very late Cretaceous period, just before the KPG extinction. It was around one meter long, and its fossils were discovered in the nest of a dinosaur, which is where it gets its name, because it is thought that it may have eaten infant dinosaurs. However, it could have also been an egg thief. After the mass extinction, the Sebekids recovered very quickly, with members of the family, like Zolmasuchus, that was known from Bolivia, being amongst the largest predators in their ecosystem, possibly at the top of their food chain, although they were actually not that big, growing to around the size of a spaniel. It was just because when they lived directly after the KPG extinction, very few other predators could compete yet. Zalmasuchus had many of the distinctive traits of the family, whereas crocodiles have a skull that is wider than it is tall, Zalmasuchus and almost every other member of the family had a snout that was laterally compressed, making its skull look a lot more like the skull of a predatory dinosaur than a modern crocodile. It is thought to be a terrestrial predator like its later relatives, however the small, more ancient Sebekids were more diverse than their later relatives. For instance, another member of the family, called Sahita Sucus, known from Brazil, had even adapted to become semi-aquatic, like modern crocodiles, which is very normal after a mass extinction, because so many animals have gone extinct, there are usually many niches open in the ecosystem, so the survivors can very quickly evolve to fill them. However, over time this would change, with the purely terrestrial members of the Sebecidae family being the only ones left by the Eocene Epoch, around 45 million years ago. The most well-known Sebekid was called Sebekus, which was also the first species discovered back in 1937. Sebekus were about 3 meters long, and were completely terrestrial carnivores, adapted for hunting and then chasing down other land animals, which is indicated in many of their features, not just their long limbs. Modern crocodiles have a tall and horizontally flat tail to help paddle through the water, but Sebekus had a round tail more similar to other reptiles like lizards. Plus, modern crocodilian skulls are shaped in such a way that their eyes poke out above the waterline, while their bodies stay concealed, so they can ambush their prey at the water's edge. And Sebekids did not have this feature. Another big difference was in their teeth. Crocodiles have conical shaped teeth, whereas Sebekus and all the Sebekids had flat serrated teeth which were very indicative of the family. This difference is important because crocodiles have conical teeth so that they can keep a tight hold of any prey 
as crocodiles, especially larger ones, kill their prey by drowning them. But the Sebekids, being land animals, needed to inflict as much damage as possible, and razor teeth are a better shape for this. The teeth of Sebekids were actually very similar to predatory dinosaurs, and due to this, but also their distinctive skull shapes, when Sebekus was first discovered, it was even thought that it may have been a species of dinosaur that had managed to survive the KPG extinction. Whereas many Sebekidae are known from fragmentary remains here and there, Sebekus has many fossils, being known from Colombia to Argentina, in a very large time frame of almost 50 million years, from right after the extinction of the dinosaurs to the Miocene epoch about 10 million years ago. During the Sebekids reign, South America was not connected to North America via a land bridge, and so the entire continent was isolated from all the other land masses, allowing the animals to evolve independently. So like Australia, or Madagascar today, the prehistoric animals were very unique, and unlike anything found anywhere else. South America was home to cow-sized armadillos and elephant-sized sloths, although the most common small to medium sized herbivores were a peculiar group of animals named the notoungulates that were probably the most populous mammals in South America at this time. The notoungulates were hooved animals, but they weren't related to the real ungulates, animals like pigs, horses and deer. They were actually a completely different group of animals that just convergently evolved with hooved animals from other continents. The notoungulates were most likely the main source of prey for the sebekids, as they shared many of the same ecosystems. South America was also home to many capable predatory competition for the Sebekids, like the famous terror birds, but also a group of predatory mammals called Sporacidons that looked a bit like saber-toothed cats, but were actually a whole other different kind of mammal that reproduced in a similar way to marsupials. These other large South American predators did not cause an issue for the Sebekids, and despite not being as well known, were actually just as successful and widespread across South America as these three predator groups have fossils from the same ecosystems, presumably because they hunted different prey or filled different niches. Land crocodiles had been found outside of South America, including one Sebekid named Iberosuchus that has fossils found in Spain, but by around 30 to 40 million years ago, almost all of them had gone extinct. However, they continue to thrive isolated in South America for many more millions of years. In fact, around 10 to 20 million years ago was when the Sebekids would produce their largest species, Baronosuchus, that was a contender for one of the largest carnivorous land animals to exist since the dinosaurs went extinct. Baronosuchus is only known from the snout section of a skull. However, this is enough to tell that the skull would have been over a meter long, and so if it had similar proportions to other more complete Sebekids, would have meant it could have grown to around 6 meters long in total, making it larger than a polar bear. Eventually, the Sebekids would go extinct around 10 million years ago. The reasons for their extinction are not completely understood, but it happened around the same time as many other South American animal groups disappeared from the fossil record. For a long time, it was thought that the unique animals in South America went extinct due to being outcompeted by North American animals that would eventually colonize the continent. However, this is known not to be the case, as the animals in South America had been going extinct for millions of years before the arrival of animals like felines and camelids. The most likely reason for the extinction was climate change, and it is known that South America had an unstable climate after the formation of the Andes, around 10 million years ago. The Sebekids were the last major group of land crocodiles to go extinct, but they show that in geologic terms, we only very recently entered into a time where all crocodiles are at least partly aquatic but the view that crocodiles are only aquatic ambush hunters belies a much richer evolutionary history. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.